Now today I want to show you how I solved my biggest dilemma when I first started my design career. And that is when you're creating responsive designs, how do you translate the font sizes between desktop, tablet and mobile? And the way I solve this is by following a simple rule. My H1 should be anywhere between 30 and 40 pixels. Let me show you. So in case you missed the previous video where we talk about how to create a typography scale, make sure to check the description as I left the link down below. And also it will make more sense if you see that video first and then afterwards you see this one. Okay, so what we did in the previous one, right? We created this typography scale. So what I've done is basically I started doing some designs. So using the typography scale and using my H1 textile, I just created this simple kind of like layout. And then I translated this to tablet, which works fine. And then afterwards I tried to do the same thing for mobile. But when I go on mobile, as you can see, the text is too big. So what do you do in this case? So what most people do when they see that this is happening on mobile, they just change this H1 with an H4 or an H3. But this is not the way of to do it. Because every single time someone will look at the file and you will see that from an H1 you went to an H4, they will think that you actually changed the tag. And as we previously explained in the previous video, this is really important for SEO as well. So if you're using H1 on desktop, when you're using on mobile, you should have H1 as well. So for this, we will need to create another typography scale that we're going to use only on mobile. So to do that, we're going to head over to back to typescale.com. And now we're going to create another scale. And using the rule that I previously mentioned that my H1 should be around 30 to 40 pixels. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to add another heading. And now I'm going to change the scale accordingly. So my H1 over here, it's around that value. So this is 40. So oh, this is too small. So this is kind of like a major second. So basically this is now you can do something else. You can also lower the base font size from 16 to 14 pixels. But remember that the smaller the font is, the harder it will be for some people to read it. So usually I keep this as 16 just to be safe but it also depends a lot on the font that you're using. So it's not something that it's set in stone. It's something that you need to figure out when you're designing, depending on the font that you're using. So I just play around a bit with the scales just to see where everything lands. And if I'm happy with the scale, what I do now is I translate same as I did for my desktop, all these values in Figma. So now we can just go back, copy this one, change this to mobile. So the developers will know exactly how the values changed from desktop to mobile. Now these values over here, I'm going to change them with the values that were generated in Typescale. Now after translating all those values, you're going to have something like this. So now if you look at it, you can actually see how the heading is changing depending on the responsiveness. So you're not going to have any confusions that, oh, I used H1 on desktop, but then afterwards I used H4 as being my first H1 on mobile. And then afterwards I added another one. It just gets super confusing. So now that you have the same structure for desktop and mobile, it makes more sense. And it doesn't really matter what scale you use, to be honest, because it's like here we used major third and here we used major second. It doesn't really matter the scale as long as you have that visual hierarchy and you keep exactly the same tags, meaning that you have H1 and H1 for mobile, H2 for desktop, H2 for mobile and so on. So now the next step will be to same as we previously did with the desktop, is to create styles for these ones as well. And that's why in the previous video, I actually added desktop. So now what I will do, I will add H1 mobile. And then I will carry on with the rest of them as well. A few moments later. Now, another thing here, after you start putting all these values, if the value of your body is the same on desktop and mobile, I will personally not create another style because that will just, you know, like, just clutter the file and it's unnecessary. So if you have the same values on mobile, just leave them as it is and you don't need to create a special textile for it. And now that we have both scales as textiles, we can just go back to our designs and change this one from H3 to the correct one, which is H1 mobile. So now the developers, when they're going to see your designs, they're going to see, okay, this H1 here is we're gonna, you know, 61 pixels and then afterwards, on mobile, this translates to 32 pixels. And that's how you keep consistency and that's how you should use type scales in your responsive designs. Now again, this will all depend on your project and this will depend on what you want to achieve and also what fonts you're using. Now a rule of thumb for me, especially when I design on my personal projects, 
is if, for example, I use a scale that is working fine on desktop, but once I translate those designs to tablet, it's not working, I'm gonna create a scale for that, for tablet. Now, if I translate that tablet to mobile and it's still not working because it's too big, I'm gonna create another scale. I know it's crazy, but the thing is, is like, this is how you keep consistency and this is how you make your designs visually look very good. Because you don't need to figure out, okay, if I had 61 on desktop, then maybe I should drop 20 points for tablet. No, you just create another scale. It doesn't matter if it's the same scale or if it's another one, as long as you have that visual hierarchy, then everything should be fine. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this technique will actually help you in your future designs as it did me when I first started out. And yeah, pretty much that's it. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm gonna see you in the next video pretty soon. Take care.